Hi there! In today's video, I'm going to be talking about embeddings. So OpenAI, in addition to providing us with the great ChatGPT API, they also provide us with an embeddings API. Now, embeddings are basically a way to convert words or sentences into this vector format, which is basically a bunch of numbers, as far as I'm concerned. And as far as I know, embeddings are kind of like a byproduct of large language models. So with large language models, you give them some text and they spit out probabilities of what are the next likely words. And embeddings somehow encode this information in them. So then you can compare the embeddings of one word to another word or one piece of text to another piece of text. And this comparison is not like just comparing the letters in words. This actually has some information about the context of those words and their relationships between other words. So let's actually take a look at the code. How do we generate embeddings with the OpenAI API? Let's create a new file. Let's call this embeddings.py. And at first, we have to import the OpenAI library, of course. So from OpenAI, import OpenAI. And we have to initialize the client, which is just OpenAI, like this. Now, you can pass in your API key here. You can say API key equals something. But I am going to use environment variable for this. So I will just do export OpenAI API key. And I will put my API key here, like this. So now it is saved into the environment. So I can clear this up and now I can use it like that. And basically what we can do is we can say that a response equals uh, client.embeddings.create. And we pass in the model, which in this case will be text embedding three small. Now there's a large one as well. I'm not quite sure when you need that. For me, the small seems to work just fine. And it's faster and cheaper, so I will use that one. And then we pass in the input. And let's just put like cat in here. And we can actually just print the response and see what is in there. So let's run python3 embeddings.py. And here we have the embeddings for a cat. Now, this, of course, doesn't make any sense to the human eye. And this is, in fact, an embedding response with some data and then an embedding object in here. And that has an embedding property. So if we just want this list of numbers, we can do something like this. We can say that the embedding is going to be response.data0 embedding. I believe that is the way to do it. So if we then print only this one and we run it, then we get just a list of numbers. Now, in order to make it a little bit easier to work with these numbers, we can also convert them into a NumPy array. So let's do np.array. And we, of course, have to import NumPy. So let's do that up here. And just to make this easier, let's define a function get embedding, which will be exactly that. So now we can just call get embedding with any text we want and it will return it. So if we print get embedding with cat, we are going to get it. And the thing you can do with embeddings is you can compare embeddings to each other. So if we take the embedding for a cat, and we take the embedding for a dog. We can then compare these. And usually the comparison is done with cosine similarity. So let's define that here. Cosine similarity. Let's do A and B and Copilot will handle the rest. <laughs> so basically this is a mathematical algorithm for calculating the cosine similarity. And let's try to print the cosine similarity between a cat and a dog. Now, the actual words are very dissimilar, like the letters. They're completely different letters. It's the same amount of letters, but still. If I now run this, 
then the similarity between these is 0.6, which doesn't really make any sense by itself. But what if we add here something else? What if we add like the word feline? And let's print here cat versus dog is this one. And let's do cat versus feline. And let's also do dog versus feline. And now let's run this thing. So here we can see that cats and dogs are similar, but cat is more similar to feline than to a dog. And a dog is less similar to feline than a cat. So we can see these kind of relationships here. Now there's a very cool video by Computerfile where they add together these embeddings and subtract embeddings from each other. And then the result is a new embedding that represents another word. Now at least I thought that that is how it works, but it's not quite like that. So you can't convert the embeddings into the word that it represents. But you can add together and subtract embeddings from each other because they are vectors, so you can do math with them. And you can take the result and you can compare that result to another embedding and see what embedding it is the most similar with. So let me show you what I mean. I have here a words.py that has just a list of random words. Let's generate the embeddings for each of these. So I'll create a new file called dictionary.py and I will from uh, words import words. And also from embeddings I will import get embedding. And I'm going to remove this code from here. We don't need that anymore. We only want these functions. And I am going to say that the dictionary is going to be an empty dictionary. And we are going to loop through all the words and we are going to get the embedding for that word. And we're going to save it into this dictionary. And then we're going to save this dictionary on the computer. So I will import numpy as np and then down here we can save with np.save the dictionary on the computer. So this way we don't have to generate these embeddings every time. We are just going to have a dictionary with the word and its embedding. So let's do this. Let's run python3 dictionary.py and it will take a while while it creates all the embeddings for these words. Okay, and now it's done. So now we have this dictionary.npy file. So then we can do some math with these vectors. So let's create a file called vectormath.py. And here we are again going to from embeddings import cosine similarity, because we need that here. And let's also import numpy as np. And we can say that the dictionary is going to be np load dictionary. So we're going to load all the embeddings into a dictionary. So let's do some math with these vectors. Let's make a vector that is going to be not a banana, but let's do a king. We're going to take the embedding for a king and we're going to subtract the embedding for a man and we are going to add the embedding for a woman. Now actually these are just lists, so we can't really do these operations. I forgot that I should have converted this into a numpy array. So I should say np.array like this. So then we can just do plus or minus. So let me generate the dictionary one more time. But basically we are then going to have here a vector which is again an embedding, but it is from a king minus a man plus a woman. Can you guess what the result will be? Now again, we can't just convert the vector into an actual word, but we can see which word it is the most similar to in our dictionary. So let's set here like results, which is going to be a dictionary. And then we're going to loop through all of the items in the dictionary and get the word and the embedding. And we are going to save into the results the cosine similarity between our vector 
and the embedding of the word. And I think that this script got stuck, so I'm going to run it one more time. But we are then going to sort these results by the most similar to the least similar. So we can do it by doing that. And let's just print like the five first results like that. Now, for some reason today, the OpenAI API is very slow, which always happens when I'm making a video, but otherwise it works perfectly. So let me try to make this dictionary one more time. Okay, now it was fast. So now let's run our vector math that will calculate king minus man plus woman. What is the result? Python 3 vector math dot pi. And look at this. We do have still king here and we have woman here because those were what we put in. But look at this. We have queen in here. So when you take a king and you take out the man from a king and you replace it with a woman, you get a queen. Now, in the computer file video that I mentioned, they didn't get these original words here, but they were not using OpenAI for this and they were using some kind of Google Word Duvec system. So it worked a little bit differently. But still, we got here a queen. Now, we can do other stuff here too. We can take, for example, London and we can subtract from it England and we can add United States. So what would it be if we take London and we subtract the Englandness from London and we substitute it with United States? Well, we get New York, which is pretty interesting. Another example is we can take the word shirt and we can subtract man and we can again add woman. And what would that be? It is a blouse. Now, if we take shirt and we subtract woman and we add a man, then it will change a little bit. We are going to have a jacket. So apparently a jacket is more manly than a blouse. And there are lots of interesting things you can do with this. Now, again, we are not converting the vector into a word, but we have a dictionary of words and we are comparing our vector to the vector of these words. Now, what if we take the word woof and we subtract dog and we add a cat? What is that? It is meow. <laughs> if we instead add a cow, we get moo. <laughs> So this by itself already is fun and interesting, but what can you actually do with embeddings? Well, here is one example we can do. I have here a bunch of movies. So I have a dictionary of movie names and their descriptions. And here are 20 different movies. So how about we create a movie suggester? So the first thing we have to do is we have to embed all these movie descriptions. So let's do that. Let's create a file called movieembed.py. And from movies, we are going to import the movies. And from embeddings, we are going to import get embedding. And let's create a movie dictionary, or what should we call movie embeddings. And we're going to loop through all the movies and their names, and we're going to save them in the embeddings. Now, did I actually make this function return a NumPy array? I think I did. Okay, so this already converts it into a NumPy array, so we don't have to do it here. I guess previously we didn't have to do it anyway, but we just have to make sure that this is a NumPy array so that we can add and subtract from them. Although we don't have to do that anymore in this case. Anyway, we are going to save this with NumPy, so we have to import NumPy. So then we are going to have the embeddings saved by the movie name. So we're going to embed only the description. So let's run this thing. Python 3 movie embed.py. Okay, now we have movie embeddings. Let's create another file. And this is going to be a suggester.py. And here, what do we need? Well, from embeddings, we're going to import um, get embedding and cosine similarity. And we are going to 
take a prompt from the user. So let's get it from the input. What kind of movie do you want to see? And we are going to take the prompt that the user gives and we are going to convert it into an embedding. And then we are going to load the movie embeddings from the file and we're going to loop through all of them. So actually we do need to import np, so numpy as np. And let's again do results equals an empty dictionary. And we're going to loop through all of the embeddings and we're going to take the cosine similarity between our vector of the prompt. I'll actually call this prompt embedding. And this is going to be the movie embedding. Let's call it movie embedding. And then we can again sort these results and we can take the first five. Let's take just the first two in this case. And let's print out those two movies. And we can actually move this movie embeddings loading up here and we can just make a while true loop here so that we will constantly keep asking for another movie so we can test it out. So let's run python3 suggester.py and it will ask me what kind of movie do you want to see? So let's say I want to see a mafia movie and it will suggest me The Godfather or Pulp Fiction. Okay, what about a movie about dreams? Inception or La La Land? Okay, how about a fantasy movie? We get Spirited Away and Mad Max Fury Road. How about a scary movie? We get A Quiet Place and The Witch. And let's try a space movie. And we have Interstellar or Gravity. And let's try a movie about a musician. And we get La La Land or Pulp Fiction. So basically it works pretty well. And the thing is that if we go to the actual movies, for The Godfather, I ask for a mafia movie, but the description does not mention mafia. So actually the embeddings contain the information that organized crime <laughs> is related to the mafia. And for example, the movie about a musician was La La Land. And this does not mention the word musician, but it does mention pianist. So if we were using just a basic word search, then we would not have found this movie. Because there's nothing about a musician in there. Now, Interstellar and Gravity both mention space, but I guess if we do something like a movie about aliens, then maybe aliens are related to space enough that we get Interstellar and Gravity. Even though we don't mention aliens in either of these. And of course you can use this for Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. I hate that word because it's such a complicated word for a very simple thing. So with RAG, if you for example have a user manual and you want to have a chatbot that answers questions related to the user manual, then you can take the question from the user and you can either directly embed that one or you can convert it into like a RAG query maybe some keywords or something like this, and then you can embed that. And you can take the user manual and you can cut that into chunks and then you can embed all the chunks and then you can compare the embeddings of the chunks to the embedding of the prompt or the rag query. And then you can take the chunk from the user manual that matches the best and you can give that along with the question to an LLM and then you can answer questions based on that. Perhaps I will make a video about that in the future. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that video. I actually have made such a system already, but without embeddings. So it would be interesting to see how much better it works with embeddings. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, then leave me a like and a comment and let me know what I should do with embeddings next. Or if you have any other ideas for videos, then let me know in the comments. And I will see you in the next one.